Hi. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do a little update again because the last time I recorded was in October. And uh, got some new stuff in. A lot has grown since then. It's now mid January. And uh, just got this in the other day. It's uh, Pinguicula potosiensis. Another purple species. Like my cyclosecta downstairs that is dormant. And now not purple. Because dormant for a light period. So, yeah. That's the potosiensis. Got some extra draws for mania I started here because the uh, Centurium is actually crashing. And then most of the stuff is dead. There's a Drosomera and Mirabilis that I just fed yesterday, so the leaves are kind of folded over. As you can see, it's a lot more reactive than you think it would be. So, yeah. Pretty heavy folding. Then the Madagascariensis is growing back, actually. So, yay. Then there's another Mirabilis that I thought was an Alicia, but it isn't. And then, uh, not that one. It's the ridiculous Drosser Occidentalis again. Clumping, making a mound. Uh, probably dead Androsacea. And I've got some Drosser Felix sprouting. I got these seeds at the Carolina Carnivorous Plant Society meeting in December. Late November. But it's still small. Uh, that was supposed to be Drosser Barbagera. It doesn't look like it took. So I might order some of those. Again, then we've got Palacia subspecies Trichocallus, turning very red and cranking out Gemme. Need to get some of those off my hand. Then, uh, Drosera Omissa, that I got at the NECPS plant show. It is blooming prolifically, so that is like, mm, three months, four months old in flowering. They're pretty big for pygmies, too, uh, as you can see. Palacia, it's like the size of one of the leaves on Amissa. And we've got the Coquella back there that have rebounded, no blooms yet, but we'll see. Then a lot of flytrap seeds, but no germination yet. And we've got some Rosiana, with Gimme. And Leucoblasta, which is kind of this really cool pink ring around the leaves. Like a haloing effect almost, you can kind of see it there. Pretty cool. Yeah. Hoping to get the orange flowers in soon. So I really like those. And an empty pot. And uh, yeah, I kind of fed that one two crickets. That really big one. So uh, that's what live feeding can do for you. And your fly traps. Because those are exactly the same genetically. Well, they're both seed grown. So, but they're siblings. And that one is like doubled in size. So yeah. Then we've got regular seedlings that are actually pretty nicely colored. And a bunch of dead darling Tonia. Then got Flava. I think I might have a Flava by Miner. And then it's really cool. Oh, well, I should say I got more, like 3,000 more Sarsenia Miner from Francis Marion seedlings from Larry Melichamp. I mean, with the UNC Charlotte again. So um, I got that. That's not even half. Um, that is a bush of Miner. And, uh, yeah, but we got this really pale one. I'm hoping it retains its color when it matures. And I would be calling it Swamp Fox. Because it's really cool. There's a lot of windows. Let's see if we can get closer. You can see a lot of windows on that guy. That seems pretty cool. And, uh, uh open pollinated Sarasini seed. No germination yet, as you saw in October. In November. Uh, and then we got a maroon monster with a few growth points. My Jones Yay by Luca Phyla cross. Should look pretty awesome. Got one, two, three, four, five ish plants. Got the Rosia that it responded nicely to going into lights. I might bring the other ones in and put the seeds out for more stratification. And you've got spatter patterns by lamentation. Pretty cool looking. Getting bigger. More defined pictures. Nice veins. And the miner everywhere. And Smills goes by self and Brunswick County, North Carolina, Rubra. And the Reedy Creek Bog feeds. And now we're gonna go over at the Nepenthes. Okay, so we've got some afternoon lighting coming in, which makes for a nice look. Um, I've added an aquarium bubbler of the community, which has worked pretty well. So uh, as you can see, Trincata is getting skinnier, a little shorter. 
and actually got some pictures coming in on the Fusca after I divided it because I can just pretty much snap it in two and little humble DI yeah. Stolens and Mutual Clear enough for Phyla growing along no blooms yet don't know what it takes to get that to flower and the Caladium picture you saw last time towards the front right there black peristome and you've got a little ventricosa and two Bastiana pictures which have awesome shape to them uh, let's see no new wrist leukoides by ventricosa and we've got Nile that's pretty cool I just added a live mural worm so it should give a little bit of nutrient boost we've got another picture from it back there and what else yeah, so there's the uh, growing point. And has these cool coppery leaves when it first comes out with the new lights. Uh, Lorraine cranking along next to Caladium and Vogelii. And it's hiding the other tendril. So, oh yeah! And, I can't see. Too bright. I actually got some Lady Pauline pictures from a cutting I got a year ago. That's the first picture it's ever made, and it is tiny. So you can see. Ugh. Uh, don't mind me. I'm just being dramatic. Uh, it's so tangled up in there. Yeah, so, yeah. That's my finger, and that's the picture. It gets a lot bigger. Hopefully. If it stays that small, I might be a little disappointed. Uh, yeah, so, got the Vogelii. Oh, oh, before that. BGI. New picture. This one actually develops a purple interior. Once it gets a little bit of light. After opening, there's a really cool yellowy, bright, bright yellowy thing peristome uh it's also really fuzzy like a little woodland creature for those of you that are into that and uh yes yeah, so there's Vogelii coming along nicely and I got these in from H. Carlton it's a uh, it's Penthesia Stachia I have no clue what it's doing with that picture it just kind of went up it didn't come down and then go back up it just went up so that's coming along nicely and then uh Terpsichore Moving along. Hopefully get pictures soon. Just got one going on. Woo! Ah, I'm lost. Right there. The only bad thing about the macro is I can't find out where I'm going. Until it's too late. We've got the sea grown Ukali McFarlane eye. It's starting to actually produce some uh, woo! pictures that are touching ground now, which is where the Mindanaoensis is. It's looking good. And we've got Ramaspina. Nice and dark. And expanding. Now getting pretty tall. And that's the Berkey egg, which looks pissed as hell. I have no clue what's wrong with it. Um, but it's got another side shoot going. As you can see right there. Um, so I put it under some shade because apparently that's how they occur naturally. And we've got Regidifolia. Hopefully picture soon. This thing's so cool. And really freaking rare. And it was expensive, but relatively easy to grow. And uh, repotted all the Attenbury I seedlings, just because they like that every once in a while. And they're starting to get some algae on the old media. So, going closer on the larger one. Kind of got a red underside of the leaf. Olive coloring otherwise. And um, that one's looking more reddish reddish all around. We'll see. And Restrepia striata. Lots of leaves upright. And then, I've actually got some pictures on Mikey Eye. As you can see. A little bit of a plant. Dark pictures. I, if you can't tell, I like the dark colored ones. They're black like my soul. Uh, yeah. So that one. And then Ziphioides. No pictures yet, but it actually it should make a few soon. It'll take a while. I can wait. And then uh, I've got Singalana by Anermis by Mira, which is a really weird cross and produces some very interestingly colored pictures. Uh, you can't see now yet. There. Yes. Here we go. Uh, it's kind of this orangish red toothy thing. This is the, honestly the best way to describe it. Um, I can't pull that out because it's under the Dracula. 
Then we've got Spectre Post by Hamada, which just opened a new picture today over there in the top left corner. And there's an ultra one. And that one kind of has some color. And my Seed Grown Spectabilis from Mato has a base all. This thing's happy. Cranking along quite nicely. No pictures yet, but I got two growth points, so I can't complain. And a uh, Seed Grown Gigi by Talangensis. Should be making a picture soon. And uh, this isn't a least Putrana, like I said in the last one. It's a, probably a Burbidja by Fusca, judging from the shape of the leaves, which is still pretty cool. It'll be smaller, so more manageable. And still have the Burbidja colors. Uh, just like the Burbidja by, by Talangensis, but it's a naturally occurring hybrid. Then we've got the uh, Talangensis by Glabrata with two basils. You can't see the other one. Uh, kinda? Maybe? Yeah. You'll just have to believe me. It's there. And then... Oh, oh, Naga. The dragon. No writing the dragon. Uh, pretend I didn't say that. Uh, yeah, it's growing. Should get some pictures soon. Definitely from that leaf. That one, maybe? I don't know. Um, it doesn't have any pictures right now. And Glabrata is actually starting to make pictures now. You can see... Down there. Focus. It's hard to focus because you're so tiny. Uh, like a gnat. And then my Alba actually made a picture. Back there. Which is to be outshone by this one from Lavacola. Solid three and a half inches. So that's a mature picture for you. Uh, let's see if I can pull it out a little. Me. So there we go. Uh, I know it looks tiny. Shut up. It's a miniature species. Let me have my fun. Uh, actually, I like the miniatures better because it'll stay in this terrarium for longer, unlike that Burbidja, which will get huge, or the Bashiana, or Attenborough Eyes, or most of the other things, especially the Naga. Yeah. This is a nice little species. Dark color, stripy peristome. Uh, it cut me off again. Uh, yeah, but uh, they're a really cool little species. Very underrated. Um, I enter this in photo of the month on Terraforms all the time. Usually you get like three votes for some reason, no matter how good the photography is, because uh, you guys suck. And uh, just kidding. But that's a really cool little one. I like it a lot. And it has another picture uh, under the Dryadella. I'll pull that out later. Yeah, there's another one from the Basil offshoot. The main vine is actually uh, up there. Kind of getting smaller, so I might clip it back just so I can give the other one a boost. Then we've got the I May Be by Jacqueline by Azumi And the Burbidja. Burbidja. <laughs> okay. There's the picture. There's the stripes. There's the stripes. <laughs> it's really bright and I can't see the screen. It's getting some glare. Uh, yeah, so that'll do. And then I've got another Ramspina that I got from Mason because uh, his burned on light and he wanted me to recover it because I have more proper intermediate conditions. And then we've got the sorry looking thing right here, which uh, might not live. And I... this thing would not stop flowering, the Drydell Attenuata, so I just remounted it anyways. And it actually stopped flowering. And now it's making flowers again. So, um... It won't stop. I try to tell it to stop and give itself a rest, but no, it has a mind of its own because it's a plant and it doesn't actually have a mind. So, yeah. Get that out of the way. There's the other Lavacola picture, though. Much larger, uh, better striping, even though it was shaded, which makes no sense at all. Uh, I want to lick it, it looks like candy, and it tastes like sugar, too. There's the Aime by Jacqueline by Azume picture shaded so that didn't develop dark color it usually does but still kind of cool looking i think i haven't really looked at it yet okay enough of that uh maxillaria huntii going along one of the four radicans making itself look like grass then i actually have flowers on the encyclia polybulbon you can see focus focus can rest this on the edge of the terrarium. Buds! Two buds! I'm excited. They are small and they look really cool. And then, uh, 
Pulse of the Moss away on my dry, uh, Dracula Lodex. So you can now see the growth point coming in. There's two. So, yeah. Then, yes, the, the Brass Valley Cuxilata, which I couldn't remember last time. New leaf. And the Arrangius Oteo Alba. It has flowers. They're kind of deformed, but it has flowers. And they're really bright. Because they're pure white. And the light reflecting off of them over blows the exposure because I can't adjust the ISO on this thing after I start shooting. Um, but yeah, they got four, four spikes on it, so it's happy. I'm cutting back watering because that's seasonally what they do during the winter. I should probably stop fertilizing it a bit as well. I don't know, but it's like, I hope the rest of the flowers form nicely. We've got the Sagamorchid Pusilla, Tlanzebo Bluso Guatemala, uh, Macidium Croesus. Big leaves. And Bulbophyllum mirum doing its thing with no flowers and just leaves. And I actually found some bugs on this guy, which explains why it looks like crap. Literally. It's like a brown turd. Um, that's the Sophronita cernula looking very pathetic. Not happy at all. Uh, yeah. And got a lot of new growth on this guy. The. Collagene from Briata Mini. So I get a lot of flowers next year. And so there's just the two. Because I'm going to start fertilizing it like hell. Once spring approaches. And same with that one. So I can actually get some blooms. And same with you and you. Yeah, so that's about it. Um, can't think of anything I've left off this time. Usually I forget something. If I did, uh... Probably the Dormouse, because main vine has been cut back, and that's all it has on it. Yeah.